Tesla is finally making good on another battery day promise, which involves them refining their own battery grade lithium for their in-house made batteries using a much more environmentally friendly and less costly process. Follow along as I discuss some exciting updates about Tesla's lithium refinery outside of Corpus Christi, Texas, and a bit about their innovative process. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. At Battery Day over four years ago, Tesla announced that they would be refining their own lithium for battery production. But in true Tesla fashion, they also shared that they would be using an innovative, more efficient, and more environmentally friendly acid-free refining process that they expect to result in over a 30% reduction in the cost of refining lithium. In May of 2023, Tesla finally broke ground on their facility and shared the following post on their website, which reiterated the quote, acid-free lithium refining route that they would be deploying. With that being said, if you fast forward to December 15th of this year, Tesla North America on X shared this post announcing quote, this week we fed raw material through our kiln of our lithium refinery outside of Corpus Christi, Texas for the very first time. Increasing lithium refining capacity is critical to a sustainable energy economy. With that being said though, this is just the beginning because if you look at the background of this picture, you can see that construction is still happening and the facility is not completely operational yet. However, this is a great sign that we should see good production from this facility in 2025. Now, drone pilot and YouTuber Joe Tegmeyer recorded a great drone flyover video in November of this year that I will link to down below. And he describes in that video the various sections of the factory and what stage of the refining process they relate to. I definitely recommend that you click the link in the video description and watch that full video. Joe Tegmeyer does great work. With that being said, Joe did make it clear that this is only one half of the refinery build out and that there will be a second twin structure in the space next to the current facility. With that being said, based on what Tesla previously announced, this particular refinery, once fully built out, should refine enough lithium for around 50 gigawatt hours of battery production per year. So this first half of the equipment that is currently being built out should be able to produce around 25 gigawatt hours per year of supply. I imagine Tesla will get this section up and running and then make any needed adjustments to the process to really optimize it before they set up the second half. This seems to be the most efficient way to do this. That way you don't invest in processes and equipment that need to be changed later on. When it comes to the raw materials that Tesla will be refining into the battery grade lithium, at Battery Day, Elon and Drew Baglino described extracting lithium from clay using sodium chloride, which is of course table salt. Elon Musk said, quote, we actually discovered looking at first principles physics, instead of just the way it's always been done, we found that we can actually use table salt, sodium chloride, to basically extract the lithium from the ore, and nobody's done this before to the best of our knowledge. Drew Baglino added, simply mix clay with salt, put in water, salt comes out with the lithium, done. With that being said though, it doesn't look like this new refinery is going to be extracting lithium from clay. However, according to this article, which also aligns with statements made by Joe Tegmeyer, this Tesla facility will be refining spodumene into lithium hydroxide. So while the clay extraction process doesn't seem to be happening, at least at this facility, I do believe that Tesla still will be using an acid-free, likely sodium chloride-based approach to lithium refining. When it comes to the basic process of taking spodumene and turning that into lithium hydroxide, basically what happens is companies take the spodumene and they put it through a roasting process. After the roasting process, the spodumene goes through a leaching process, which commonly uses acids to leach out the lithium. Then after the leaching process, the material is put through a purification process to remove the various metals that were also leached out in addition to the lithium. After the purification, the lithium can then be further processed into, for example, lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. So basically where Tesla's process is different is in the leaching stage where they're not going to be using harsh acids, but instead they're going to be using apparently a sodium chloride based leaching process. In order to get some details around this, I pulled up a patent application 
that Tesla filed for several years ago. And although clay extraction is specifically mentioned in this patent application, I believe the salt leaching process after the roasting will still be effective with a spodumene raw material that Tesla is going to be refining at this new facility. With that being said, here are some highlights from this Tesla patent application, starting with the traditional acid leaching process and some of the negatives around that. So it looks like commonly sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid is used in the leaching process. However, while this acid leaching is effective, as is written in this patent application quote, this acid leach method not only leaches out lithium, but it also leaches out high concentrations of impurities, including sodium, potassium, iron, aluminum, calcium, and magnesium. High lithium loss from the subsequent removal of the impurity elements, especially aluminum removal, may significantly lower the overall lithium extraction efficiency. Furthermore, high acidic consumption and complicated leach solution purification methods also make the overall extraction process less cost effective and not environmentally friendly. With that being said, this chart was shared in this patent application which shows the H2SO4 leach versus the salt-based leach. And you can see the greater concentrations of some of those impurities with a non-selective sulfuric acid leach. So not only is this sodium chloride leaching process more environmentally friendly, but once again, since the result has less impurities, the purification process is more efficient as well. With all that being said, once again, fully operational, fully built out, once again, this facility should refine enough lithium for around 50 gigawatt hours of batteries per year, which is of course a good start, but I believe this is just the beginning that Tesla is really just proving out the process and maybe other companies will use this process and they'll um, sell them the IP rights to it. I'm not sure, maybe they'll share it with their suppliers to keep their costs down. I believe this is just the start and that Tesla is really pushing the industry forward towards a more sustainable method of lithium leaching and lithium refining. So I'm excited to see Tesla doing this, not only for their own benefit, but for the benefit of the industry in general. In addition, I'm excited that Tesla, once they have this up and running, will have more supply chain control. This is especially important as the cost of lithium can fluctuate greatly. And over the last several years, we saw some massive increases in the price of lithium. Then of course, it has recently come back down to uh, more normal levels. But with that being said, with a market that can go up and down, if you as a company have more control over not only the cost, but also the supply of a critical material like lithium for producing batteries, that gives you a lot more security in the future. So I'm really excited about this announcement that Tesla is beginning to make great progress with this facility. And they actually were able to run raw material through their kiln at the refinery. But I would love to know what you think about this. Do let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on all this. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.